Welcome back, everybody. Uh, first thing I like to say is this is the new shirt I have available, part of the War Dog series, uh, Mountain Man's Champion Homer. Uh, I got them in sizes uh, medium, large, extra large, 2X, and 3X. Uh, they're 25 bucks with shipping included inside the USA. And uh, you can contact me if you're interested on... Uh, Facebook Messenger, my email, richardjschoolboy60 at gmail.com, or on Instagram, uh, Messenger, whatever they call it, but uh, pretty cool shirt. Uh, also like to say thanks for everybody that attended our P.O.P. show, confirmation show, performance over pedigree confirmation show, hosted by my friend Alex. Uh, we do the show every year in Riverside. Had a good turnout. A lot of good people showed up. A lot of good looking dogs. And uh, congratulations to all the winners. And much respect and thanks to those who attended, participated, and uh, supported us. Uh, once again, nothing meant for legal purposes. This is all history. Maybe I'll change the wording in the thing to say history channel or something. Because that, that's basically what I talk about. I don't know anything current. And I don't have, uh, uh, haven't been around that for many, many years. A few decades now. But I still enjoy the breed. You know, I judge. And I judge dog shows, you know, all over the place. And even weight pulls and stuff. But you guys know the score. But, uh. This video, I'm cover a couple things. Uh, someone asked me a question about the past, you know, uh, like in boxing, how they have weight divisions. Do dogs have weight divisions? And uh, they didn't, you know, but they did have a weight stipulation. So that could be anywhere from the, what I've seen anyways, from the high 20s, male and female, to uh over 60 pounds you know and if there's there was no stipulation on the weight it would be called a catch weight and those were usually reserved for big dogs where it was difficult to find something the exact weight so they just kind of come in whatever weight they want they were big sometimes there was a big weight difference usually it's not more than a few pounds and generally on a bigger dog just like heavyweights in boxing uh, there's no, you know, over 200 pounds, there's no weight stipulation. So you come in whatever weight you want. In modern times, with all the legal stuff, uh, with the weight pool, that changed a little bit because in the past, there weren't any weight stipulations for the weight pool. Now they have a weight range. Uh, I don't, you know, I haven't been involved with that in a while uh, as far as judging and all that. But uh, they started adding a weight range, you know, like almost like a weight division, meaning uh, the, the, the weight your dog was corresponded with the weight he pulled. Because before a little, you know, a little 35 pound dog could only pull so much where a 50 or 60 pound dog could beat them because they're a much bigger dog so of course they're going to pull more weight they change that to where they have a weight weight range right of uh i figure it's within a within a, a certain number of pounds i would guess you know somebody correct me in the comments if i'm wrong how that goes down but uh how it relates to this is you know, just like in boxing, you want to come in right on weight or as close to it as you can. So in a weight pool or something like that, if there was a weight range of, let's say, 5 pounds. Let's say it's 35 to 40 pounds. You would want to come in as close to 30, uh, 40 pounds as you could. Meaning, uh, in that respect, a 35-pound dog compared to a 40-pound dog would have a disadvantage. If both were closer to the 35 pound, then it's even as far as that goes. It's more even. Then it's just a matter of same size dogs uh, pulling whatever weight they pull. 
but that five pound weight difference even in a in a weight pool could make a difference depending on the dog and the experience and the trainer and you know uh competitions they've had you know but like anything else you can perfect a keep for weight pull you can perfect the method in which you pull the training you know there's a lot I'll, I'll cover some of it what i remember from the past the way i was taught to teach a dog to weight pull but i'll do that going back to the past uh the topic topic came up of dogs coming in overweight right that happens that's why the forfeit was put up to make sure not only you made the weight, which was the most important thing, but you also made the date and the time of the show, right? So, uh, within that, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why someone missed the weight. It could be something's off with the dog. It could be uh, they chose the wrong weight. And this goes the other way, too. They might come in too light, but we're talking about coming in overweight. Uh, and they couldn't pull them down that far. It could be they got a hold of something uh, which increased their weight. It could be the dog didn't empty out properly, which uh, they didn't drop the weight. And it could be that it was done on purpose. They purposely came in overweight to have that advantage. And especially if the forfeit was minimal. So because of that happening Often enough, what people started doing was making the forfeit the same amount as the bet. So if it was for 100, the forfeit would be for 100, like that. If it was a lot, the forfeit would be a lot to make sure you came in overweight. And in one country where it's not illegal to do dogs in the tr traditional sense... What they started doing with people that were known to come in overweight is they double forfeited them. Meaning uh, the forfeit was the bet plus they had to pay a forfeit. That's the way I understood it anyways. Maybe I'm wrong with that. But it kind of, they double sanctioned you. So you're paying double the forfeit if you come in overweight. Right. And it's just a way of trying to monitor so that people follow the rules. Now, why a dog comes in overweight, like I said, they could have got a hold of something. Let's say they eat a piece of cloth and they don't pass it, or some uh, bone, they don't pass it yet, or a piece of leather. And, and it may sound ridiculous, but that kind of stuff happens. They could have got a hold of some food and it hasn't digested yet, right? Or the dog doesn't empty out. If a dog doesn't empty out on time, then you're looking at maybe... Uh, you know, anywhere from half a pound to a pound. Which half a pound is not bad. Sometimes you can take it off, sometimes not. A pound is getting up there where it's, you know, makes someone think, why are they so overweight? And it could be not just that they didn't empty out when they dumped, they didn't piss either, right? Or piss very little, right? Could be the dogs too, uh, would come in, you know, heavy because he's too wet. He didn't dry out naturally. Or whatever they gave them to dry out with didn't take the proper effect. And it could be that, that uh, like I said, some people did it on purpose to have that advantage. Now, if you're off a little bit, let's say you're off, you're, you're heavy, a couple of ounces, an ounce, a couple of ounces, a quarter pound, maybe even a half a pound. That happens, right? But there's been times when people have been a pound, pound and a half, two and a half pounds, two pounds, like that. For me, that's on purpose. And uh, even though that happened, you know, because people got to see the dog. Meaning, I've seen dogs that come in heavy, but they were carrying way too much weight. One dog came in way heavy. He was like a pound and a half over, almost two pounds over. So they had to pay the forfeit. The other guy came in on weight. But the dog that came on weight was still much bigger than the other dog who was overweight. Meaning the other dog was just naturally a smaller dog. He had not only 
did they choose the wrong weight, which he didn't make anyways. Even if he would have come in on weight, he would have still been the smaller dog. They were just totally off. It happened. I've seen guys be misjudge weight, three, four, five pounds. Where someone else with experience could tell that that dog was way too heavy, carrying too much weight, too much moisture, too much fat, too much muscle, too much whatever it is. Just by looking at them, you can tell they're way too heavy, you know. Some of the signs are is every part of their body is covered with weight. And they appear wet. Or there's muscle, uh, you know, along the, the, the ridge of their back. Generally, you can see some of the backbone. And then you can see the muscles, loin muscles along the side of the back. Same with the hips. Or you see that sinew of muscle along their their uh rib cage right and or you see the definition definition of the muscles split in their chest and the muscles around their shoulders going around their you can you know the bone and then the muscle the shoulder muscle comes down and then none of it is tight their belly is not tight their throat area is not tight right in those cases, what I just mentioned, you don't see none of that. It's all covered. So that would be an example of a dog. In my opinion, most of the time is a dog. They just missed the weight with the dog. They called it too heavy. They made, <clears throat> they either made the weight or came in heavy, but they didn't pick the right weight anyways, even if they would have made the weight. Now, if you have a dog that's cut up, Acting good, feeling good, tight in all those areas where you can see the the bones connected to the hips and the bone covering the kidney area and nice thick stifles and tight and their chest coming down and tucked up in their belly and their throat tight and their front end tight. You can see the split in the chest. You see the split in their head, the muscles, right? They're not sucked in. Their head is not thin and sucked in. They look good. And if that type of dog looking that way and acting that way came in overweight, generally it was done on purpose. If it's a lot of weight, you know, like I said, a couple of ounces, even a quarter pound, something like that. That's not too bad. That's, that's not, it's hard to say that that was done on purpose because that few ounces or whatever it is, it really doesn't make that much a difference. Uh, it makes more of a difference on a smaller dog than it does a bigger dog. But a couple ounces ain't nothing, really. You know, you could probably take the dog. If he'll go out and piss, you'll piss a couple of ounces easy. But if they're way overweight, they're a pound or a pound and a half overweight and they look that way, it was done on purpose. And that's just some of the stuff that people would pull. They try to have every advantage right i wouldn't necessarily call it cheating because the other side doesn't have to go through with it they can collect the, they could have collected the forfeit uh and not done it but most people myself included most of the time you're going to do it why and i hear a lot of people i wouldn't do this i wouldn't do that and that's wrong and screw the dog i'm not right and all that all that is true, or could be true, but there's very few people that didn't go through with it. Because that's what you were there for. And you hope that the dog will make up for it, or you hope maybe something's off with the opponent. You don't know that till they got in there. Sometimes you were right, and your dog overcame it, and won anyway. Sometimes you were wrong, and you feel guilty, because you made a mistake that you shouldn't have made, but you... It happened all the time. Just like that coming in overweight. Uh, you know, it, it, it there's probably some areas with some people and certain times during the history of the breed that it didn't happen a lot or, uh, you know, and other times it happened more than other times, more often and all that. But just speaking about the hundred year, you know, back a hundred years ago and up to the, you know, uh, last century, 
uh, it happened enough that it was noticeable, you know. And like I always say, generally everything, and that's with anything in my opinion anyways. Uh, whatever happened before happens again. Whatever happened now happened before. Very little of that changes, you know. Just like dogs being in good condition. Even for the modern sports, you know. In the past, maybe not so many of them for the legal sports were in that good of a shape because it's just starting out and people are getting this and that and they don't have the science and they don't have the concept of conditioning for weight pull or treadmill race or anything like that. That changes as things advance. Same thing with the traditional sense with the breed, you know, things change. But there's still those occasions where what happened back then happened now and what happens now did it happen a long time ago yeah yeah it did people came on weight overweight by accident or on purpose you know and that comes with experience and just as the uh traditional conditioning improved so did the conditioning for legal sports and hunting the reason I make those two distinctions, two reasons. Uh, we can't do what we did in the past. That, that's well known. And there's the evolution. Things change. But again, that conditioning is across the board for whatever event you're doing it for or you did it for. Because a lot of those traditionally used dogs, com competitive dogs in the past, were used for that sport. Uh, those same dogs were used in other sports, in legal sports. And some of them were hunting dogs. You know, there's a story about Norman Hooten who, you know, he, he raised uh, Butcher Boy and Bolio. You know, he owned Butcher Boy. So he hand raised him. Uh, you know, he had Bolio for about an, a year. He did the same with both of them, which is taking them out hunting, which improved their uh, hunting instincts prove their smell, great exercise, their finishing killer instincts, hunting instincts. It's good for them. So those things are across the board too, you know, bringing out those instincts in a dog. And it helps with their work ethic. So whatever endeavor you're doing with your dog, uh, having a good work ethic, in my opinion, is imperative. Right? So, uh... Again, you know, uh, there's there's penalties in boxing now, and there didn't used to be, for coming in overweight. Uh, in the past, if you came in overweight, it was up to the people if they, uh, if they wanted to do it or not, you know, the other side. As that changed, there was penalties where, you know, you would pay a fine, or the match would be off. Or you were stripped of your title. Or all these things happened, you know. And uh, some of those things reflected on the breed in the past too, you know. You'd pay a forfeit. Uh, then if the rematch was made, you know. Uh, you might have to give odds. You might have to. Uh, uh, after you pay the forfeit, you, may, you make a whole new bet. And then uh, the show is decided on that bet. The person getting the forfeit keeps that money, does whatever he wants with it, or did whatever he wanted with it. And uh, again, a lot of times you give, they had to give odds, you know, two to one, three to one, whatever it was, depending on the weight. There were also stipulations for travel, depending on the distance. Uh, the forfeit was the same, everything as far as that goes was the same. But the person traveling had a uh, would have a weight advantage, say a pound over. You know, if I'm traveling to you, if you're in your hometown and I'm traveling to you, I would get a pound for travel, meaning I could come in at a pound over the stipulated weight. So if it's 37 pound dogs, you had to make 37, or I had to make 37 because I'm in my hometown or my home or whatever it is. But the person traveling to me could make their they, they only had to make 38. Uh, that kind of... It was in some places, but it didn't happen all the time. Generally, it was a specified weight. 
you know, and that, that was it, travel or no travel, whoever's traveling just accepted it. And then you also had the fact of, uh, of uh, uh, odds also. If it wasn't a weight advantage, it could be an odds advantage. Where if it's a hundred bucks, you know, uh, I only had to cover the hundred bucks because I'm traveling. You're in your hometown. You had to come up with two hundred, so two to one, like that. So you know, even back then, you couldn't just assume that a person coming in overweight did it on purpose. Sometimes they just miss it. And sometimes it is more than a few ounces or a quarter or half a pound. It could be three quarters. It could be a quarter. Uh, because sometimes dogs don't travel well. So they don't empty out properly. So they're holding that all in. And sometimes, you know, because of that, during the show, dogs would defecate during the show because they didn't empty out beforehand. So if you're a half a pound or a pound overweight and your dog didn't empty out where if he had emptied out, he would have been right on weight or a little under. Uh, because of that, there's your pound. You know. And like I said, if it's a quite a bit, a lot of times it was done on purpose. But even that's not the case. Sometimes, like I said, they'll get a hold of something. Uh, they don't travel well. They chew on stuff, you know. And, you know, a lot of people will criticize all these things, you know. But whenever somebody tells me I would never do that, or I never would have done that, or I never did that, or that never happened to me, or I made sure that, you know, everything was right, I question them. Because that has never been true with anybody. Among the top echelon, the best, it doesn't matter if you're talking about Bill Leitner or Earl Tudor or Maurice Carver or Danny Burton or, you know, some of the people that, that I speak about, Ronnie Anderson or whoever it is. Mistakes have been made. Sometimes it's the conditioner handler's fault. Sometimes it's the dog's fault. Sometimes it's nobody's fault. Things happen. There's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, that's just the way life is. And that's the way it is in any endeavor you undertake, you know. Uh, if you do things right, most of the time and consistently, things come out right. You don't have any mishaps. You don't have any overweight problems. You don't have any mistakes. But that's hard to do 100% of the time. It doesn't matter if you were showing your dogs 10 minutes from your home. Something could happen. Including dogs getting loose and running away. Including dogs chewing through their crate. Including dogs chewing through whatever it is they're traveling in. Uh, something in their crate. Whether it's newspaper or a blanket. Or you got them loose in your car. and Or tied up in your car. they loose that way. You know, not in a crate. This dog may not have ever chewed anything in his whole life. But on that day, he'll chew your seat up. You know, he'll find some, some food in between the seats or he'll tear the rug up, you know. Uh, I, w I would liken to say that, that you could have them with their muzzle on, their mouth tape, in a crate where they can't move around, almost mummified. If they want to get into something or get at something, they'll do it. So these are some of the reasons that dogs didn't make the weight you know and like i said sometimes it's a handler's fault sometimes it's a dog's fault sometimes it's nobody's fault sometimes it's on purpose and most of the time it's not on purpose but that that's a little bit about that another thing they wanted me to cover was uh you know what uh what i did the day of the show from morning leading up to the show that night and i'll be honest with you a lot of people have their rituals that they do you know which could include let's say you wake up in the morning and uh whether you're traveling some distance or it's close by right 
They'll wake up in the morning, empty their dog out, take them out, let them loosen up, stretch their legs, warm up, all that. Do do that. And then, uh, you know, every two hours they're taking their dog out. Emptying them out, checking the weight. They're weighing them. They'll weigh them every couple hours, every three, four hours, whatever it is, several times during the day. Then they have a prep depending on how the dog feels. And they might give them a boost of this or a drink of that or something. I don't know, some yogurt or some, might give them some extra B12 or B15 or, you know. And then you have uh, the ritual where you you uh, uh, weigh your dogs, wash your dogs and do the show, right? And there could be other things they do, you know. They give them, some people I know used uh they use inhalers on the dog, you know, for their nose, or they put Vicks, Vaseline, you know, and give them a shot of this, or they might give them Dex, you know, usually people gave Dex 24 hours out or whatever, some people 12 hours out, you know, depending, they have all these routines they did, you know, this part's going to be brief for me anyways, and you have certain things, you know, like I said, might be giving them some broth or some water, some liquid, some uh, uh, might include, like I said, taking them out several times a day or three, four times a day to empty out and make sure. And they're always checking the weight and always checking the weight where they're going to come in out. If they think they're going to be light, uh, they'll give them something to boost their weight up, some liquid or maybe even a little bit of food as long as they're several, several hours out. Let's say 12 hours out or something like that. Uh, they may give them some fish. They may give them some b12 to pep them up you know or uh all these things if they're if they see they're going to be a little bit heavy overweight they might increase the dex dosage or they might uh even the, the night before they might have cut back on the feed or they might uh give the mainstays of the food let's say you're giving kibble and raw or kibble and cooked and this and that they'll give them the food part but not the kibble part right and then they monitor them that day see where their weight's at with me basically i didn't do anything i didn't change anything i didn't add anything take away anything i mentioned this before about a week out i kind of knew where they were going to be at on that day i knew if i was going to be spot on or if i was going to be a little bit under uh if i was a little bit over uh, that generally meant, you know, my dog needed to dry out. Because within that week, you know, unless you did everything wrong, they don't have a lot of fat on them. So it's not a food thing uh, uh, so much that you need to adjust. And some people did adjust it, you know. Like I said, they, they might not give them a full feed the night before, you know. They might give them, change their feed a little bit. Not mean change it, but only give them certain parts of the whole diet that they were getting, <clears throat> right, to make sure, uh, you know, that's so they don't have any digestive problems, but to make sure they're going to they're gonna make that weight. They might up the decks, they might, you know, do this and that. I really didn't do none of that. And the reason I did it is because I didn't want to change anything, uh, at the end of the keep that I was doing during the whole keep. So my thing was in the morning, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take them out, empty them out because they're usually put up. So they've been inside all night or at least rested all night. So I'm going to walk them out, let them empty out, let them stretch out. I'm going to put them up and I'm not going to mess with them. I'm not even going to look at them. I already know where their weight's at. I already know where it's going to be at. And me trying to add weight at the last minute just means I'm adding extra weight that the dog has to push. Because he wasn't carrying that weight before. So if, I, if I'm adding a pound or half a pound a day or two out, it's just extra weight. That's my mentality anyway. If they're going to come in a half a pound under, I let them come in a half a pound under not going to change it but my thing was 
not to mess with them too much because it takes away from their peak. It makes them use energy that they wouldn't use normally. Unless you took them out three or four or five, six times a day to empty them out and weigh them all through the keep, why would you do it at the last minute? They're not used to it. You're changing it. And every time you take them out like that, they're going to get amped up because they know what's coming up. They know something's going to happen. So now you're just burning energy. And you could be burning calories. And you could miss the weight that way. Which means you're probably going to give them some extra fluid. And you're going to have to force them that fluid because they don't normally want the fluid anyways. So it might be some broth rather than, rather than some water. Because if you give them water, they probably ain't going to drink it. If you did it right, if you give them some broth because it has that flavor, they'll drink it. Some won't. Even though they're hungry, they're so, in their mind, they're so amped. They don't want nothing. So I didn't mess with them too much. Then I'd go to the show. A couple hours out. And that's and what I mean that is that's when I arrived. Even if it was five or six hours generally. Now there's one time I went the day before. It didn't work out that good for me. You know. Not that my dog didn't perform good. He did. But it just took more out of him. Because he never settled down. Once we got there the day before. He thought that was the day of the show. So he was restless all night. All the next day, barely emptied out. And uh, still went two and a half hours. But but uh, that's why I don't like messing with it. So even if it was four or five hours, six hours, whatever, I still only got there a couple hours before the show. And then within a half hour, 15 minutes of my turn to do go, I take them out, empty them out. Because it was close to the time when they emptied anyways. So I'd go and they empty out. It's good. If it was close to home, I just emptied them out at home and drove to the show 15 minutes or a half hour away. If it was an hour to five, six hours away, I got there in, in relatively within a couple hours. And when I did that, I just let them settle down, didn't mess with them. Leave them alone, quiet, resting. If I had to cover them, i cover them, you know, with a blanket over the crate. If not, if they were that type to just settle down. And uh, the reason I could do that is because they were used to driving around, just kicking back, settling down, not getting too excited, not trying to look out and see where we're going and all that, all that nervous energy and wasting it. They just settle down, behave. Time to go, I take them out, go walk them out. They empty out. We're good to go. I never miss weight. Some people will say, well, Richard, you brought your dogs in heavy weight. Okay, heavy anyway. Well, okay, I did. <laughs> Still won most of my matches against all them people I named. So I'm not knocking anybody. It's just that I had a certain routine and a certain way of doing things. And my dogs were accustomed to it. And they went along with the routine. So I didn't have a lot of mishaps. I'm not saying I didn't, but. <clears throat> most of the time I didn't have a problem we're good to go we're good to go uh, you know in my mind it was kind of like you know schooling the dogs at home they're sitting around on their chain they're doing whatever they're doing I go take them off the chain and go look at them and do their thing it's the same thing or I go to a friend's house or we drive here and there or four hours away just to school a dog I'd done that it's the same thing I'd get there take them out okay let's go and do it now, granted, the show was a lot different than the schooling, but the, the method is the same. When they're, it's time to go, they're ready to go. They're cleaned out, emptied out, healthy, in shape. Go do it. So I didn't put a lot of thought into that, only because I didn't want to change a lot of things. And when you start thinking too much, you start panicking, and you start becoming nervous, <coughs> and you make mistakes because you don't think right. Or you start listening to all these other people. If you have a set way of doing your your keep for the show. And that's why I say it, it's the same across the board. It doesn't matter if you're going to a weight pool. It doesn't matter if you're hunting with your dog. If you're going to a hunting site, you're hunting hogs. And you got your catch dogs with you. And the way the ones I went on, they had the 
bay dogs, they go out and they find the hogs. And you drive with the catch dogs in the pickup in a crate to the area. So the catch dogs know that. They're in there. They're quiet. They get there. Once they hear the dogs bang, they start getting a little excited. The hog hunters cut them loose and they go catch the hog. If it's a weight pull, I would do the same thing. Go through my keep, get ready. I would I would uh, work my dog the same way if I was going to do the weight pull. That same method, which means you're going to pull several times a day. So I have, would I would have my dog prepared mentally for that and have them empty for that and go through that process. So that's what I mean when it's across the board. There's a certain way to do things that works best for you. Figure it out. Follow that method. And do it. And that's the great thing about conditioning being across the board like that. Whatever you're using them for. Like my friend Joseph Car Carter, the mink man. He has certain ways that he hunts with his dogs. And he has a method of doing it. So that's what I mean when it's across the board. The intent, the the... The function may be different, but the mindset and the conditioning process is the same. So that's why my answer is short is sweet, saying, well, I didn't really do too much, which I didn't. I just didn't want to change anything. I didn't want to change the way my dog thought. I didn't want to change the way he went through the process of getting to that point of the show. I didn't want to screw him up mentally, and I didn't want him wasting his energy physically. So that's what I, why I didn't do a whole lot. I tried to follow that same process, whether I was fighting in my house, or it was 15 minutes away, or it was two hours, or four hours, or six hours. Same process. So let me know what you think. Once again, thanks for uh, all your subscriptions and your support. And if you have comments, put them in the... Uh, in the... Uh, Put them below in the comment section. And if you like the t-shirt, hit me up. Thanks a lot.